בדרך כלל, כשרוצים לצלם משהו, עדיף שהמיקרופון יהיה מחובר למצלמה. המלצה כזו, הנה אתה. בוקר גשום, אנחנו ממשיכים עם The Wave. קראנו את הפרק הראשון ואת הפרק השני. לפני שאני מתחילה עם הפרק השלישי, אני מזכירה לכם לשים לי עוקב, זה מאוד מאוד עוזר לי, זה גם מאוד עוזר לכם. ספרו לחברים שלכם עליי, אם אני יכולה לעזור להם גם באנגלית, במבחנים, במה שהם צריכים, בשביל זה אני פה. צ'פטר 3 דייוויד קולנס was sitting in the outdoor courtyard next to the cafeteria, אני מזכירה דייוויד, זה החבר של לורי סונדרס, הכוכבת שלנו. He had already wolfed down half his lunch by the time Lori arrived. And he was beginning to feel like a normal human being again. He watched Lori put her tray down next to his, and then noticed that Robert Billings was also headed for the courtyard. Robert Billings, a loser of a Hey, look, David whispered as Lori sat down. They watched as Robert stepped out of the cafeteria, carrying a tray, looking for a place to eat. True to form, he had already started eating and stood in the doorway with half a hot dog sticking out of his mouth. There were two girls from Mr. Ross's history class sitting at the table Robert chose. As Robert sat his tray down, they both stood up and took their trays to another table. Robert pretended he hadn't noticed. דמיינו לכם את הקפיטריה של הבית ספר, כזה כמו בסרטים, לורי ודייוויד והחברים שלהם יושבים, מן הסתם במקובלים כזה. ורוברט בילינגס עם הנקניקייה החצי בפה שלו הולך ומתיישב באיזשהו שולחן שיש בו שתי בנות וברגע שהוא מתיישב הן קמות והולכות. לא יפה, לא חברי. דיוויד שוק איז הד. גורדון היי איז ורי און אנטאצ'בול. היא ממבולד. Do you think there's something really wrong with him? לורי אסקט. דיוויד שרגד. I don't know, he's been pretty strange for as long as I can remember. Then again, if people treated me like that, I'd probably be pretty strange too. It's just weird that he and his brother could come from the same family. Tizkoret, Robert Billings, he has a big deal. Jeff Billings, if I'm not wrong. And he was super, super, super popular, popular, sportive, a great man. And Robert was exactly the same. And it's really amazing that they came from the same family. Did I ever tell you that my mother knows his mother? Lori asked. His mother ever talk about him? David asked. No, except I think she told me once that they had him tested and he really does have a normal IQ. He's not really dumb or anything. Just weird, David said, and went back to eating his lunch. But Lori only picked at hers. She seemed preoccupied. לורי מספרת שאימא שלה ואימא של רוברט בילינגס מכירות אחת השנייה והיא בדרך כלל לא מדברת עליו, אבל היא כן יודעת ש... כאילו הלכו ועשו לו אבחון כזה, והוא יצא תקין, יצא לו אייקיו תקין, והוא כאילו הכל סבבה איתו, הוא פשוט משונה. לורי גם לא כל כך מתעניינת באוכל שלה, היא די כזה לא אוכלת, היא כנראית uh, כאילו דעתה מוסחת. What is it? David asked. The film, David, לורי answered. It really bothers me. Doesn't it bother you? David thought for a moment, then he said. Yeah, sure, as something horrible that happened once, it bothers me. But that was a long time ago, Lori. To me, it's like a piece of history. You can't change what happened then. But you can't forget it, Lori said. She tried a bite of her hamburger, then made a face and put it down. Well, you can't go around being bummed out about it for the rest of your life either, David said. He eyed Lori's uneaten hamburger. By the way, you're going to eat that? Lori shook her head. The movie had left her without much of an appetite. Help yourself. Not only did David help himself to her hamburger, he finished off her fries, salad, and ice cream as well. Lori looked in his direction, but her eyes were distant. Hmm, David wiped his lips with a napkin. Would you like anything more? Lori asked. Well, to tell you the truth, hey, is this it taken? Someone behind them said. I was here first, said another voice. David and Lori looked up to find Amy Smith and Brian Emmon, the quarterback, both heading for their table from opposite directions. אז לורי עדיין מאוד עסוקה עם הסרט, הסרט מאוד מטריד אותה, אין לה תיאבון, ודייוויד מצד שני אומר, וואלה, כן, מטריד, הסרט מטריד, אבל אני לא אתעסק בזה עכשיו, זה היה, זה היסטוריה, זה נגמר. ואז הוא אוכל לה את כל האוכל, כי הוא רעב מאוד. ופתאום מגיעים שני החברים האחרים שלנו, 
אימי ובריאן, בריאן זה החבר של אימי, אימי חברה מאוד מאוד טובה של לורי, שתיהן תלמידות כאלה סופר טובות. What do you mean you were here first? Brian asked. Well, I meant I wanted to be here first, Amy replied. Meaning to be first doesn't count, Brian said. Besides, I have to talk to Dave about football. And I have to talk to Lori, Amy said. What about? Brian asked. Well, about keeping her company while you talk about boring football. Stop it, Lori said. There's room for two. But with them, you need room for three, Amy said, nodding at Brian and David. הרלי הר הר, בריין גרנטד, שזה כאילו חה חה חה, באנגלית, אוקיי. דייוויד ולורי סלד אובר, ואימי ובריין סקוויזד אין נקסט טו דם את הטייבל. אימי was right about room for three. בריין was carrying two full lunch trays. אז כמו דייוויד, גם בריין כאילו אוכל מלא, ככה זה טינג'רים בנים, אתם כל הזמן אוכלים. היי, מה אתם עושים עם כל זה? דייוויד אסקט, פיידינג בריין על הבאק. אולי הוא היה הטימס קוורטרבק, בריין היה לא מאוד גדול. David stood a full head taller than him. I gotta gain some weight, Brian said as he started to wolf down his lunch. I'm gonna need every pound I've got against those guys from Clarkstown on Saturday. They are big, I mean huge. I hear they got a linebacker who stands 6'3 and weighs 16 stone. קיצר, מדובר בבחור ענק, אוקיי? בקבוצה היריבה שאמורה להתחרות בהם בשבת, ובריין מנסה ככה לעלות במשקל כדי להילחם בהם יותר טוב, לשחק נגדם יותר טוב, להיות יותר חזק, יותר כבד. I don't see what you're worried about, Amy said. No one that heavy can run very fast. Brian rolled his eyes. He doesn't have to run, Amy. All he has to do is squash quarterbacks. Will you have a chance on Saturday? Lori asked. She was thinking about the story they would need for the grapevine. David shrugged. I don't know. The team's pretty disorganized. We're way behind on learning our plays and stuff. Half the guys don't even show up for practice. ועכשיו אנחנו מקבלים נקודת מבט על הנבחרת פוטבול שלהם, אוקיי? יש להם משחק בשבת, הם כנראה יפסידו בו, לורי מתעניינת בגלל שהיא צריכה לכתוב על זה בעיתון, ובעצם דיוויד אומר שהם מפסידים כי הם נורא לא מאורגנים, הקבוצה לא, לא מאורגנת, אנשים לא מגיעים לפרקטיסס, ובאופן כללי יש שם חוסר רצינות. Yeah, Brian agreed. Coach Schiller said, He was going to throw anyone who didn't show up for practice off the team. But if he did that, we wouldn't even have enough guys to play. No one seemed to have anything more to say about football, so Brian bit into his second hamburger. David's thoughts drifted to other pressing matters. Hey, is anyone here good at calculus? Calculus is... Why are you taking calculus? Amy asked. You need it for engineering, David said. So why not wait till college? Brian asked. I heard it was so hard, you have to take it twice to understand it, David explained. So I figured I'd take it once now and once later. Amy nudged Lori. I think your boyfriend is strange, she said. Talk about strange, Brian whispered, nodding towards Robert Billings. They all looked. Robert was sitting alone at his table, engrossed in a Spider-Man comic book. His lips moved as he read, and there was a red streak of ketchup on his chin. You see him sleep through the whole movie? Brian asked. Don't remind Lori, David told him. She's upset. What, about the movie? Brian asked. Lori gave David a dirty look. Do you have to tell everybody? Well, it's true, isn't it? David asked. Oh, just leave me alone, Lori answered. I can understand how you feel, Amy told her. I thought it was just awful. Lori turned to David. There, you see? I'm not the only one that is bothered. Hey, David said defensively. I didn't say I wasn't bothered by it. I just said it's over now. Forget about it. It happened once and the world learned its lesson. It'll never happen again. I hope not, Lori said, picking up her tray. Where are you going? David asked her. I have to go and work on the grapevine, Lori said. Wait, Amy said, I'll go with you. David and Brian watched the two girls go. Gee, she really is upset about the movie, isn't she? Brian said. Yeah, David nodded. You know, she always takes stuff like that too seriously. אז בשיחה הזו הכרנו טיפה יותר את אמי ואת דיוויד ואת בריאן. שוב הם חזרו לנושא הזה של הסרט, הבנות מוטרדות, הבנים לא כל כך. הבנו את המצב של קבוצת הפוטבול. והבנות הולכות לעבוד על, ה... על העיתון, לורי הולכת יותר נכון לעבוד על העיתון, אמי מצטרפת אליה, הבנים נשארים שם. 
Amy Smith and Lori Saunders sat in the Grapevine office talking. Amy wasn't on the newspaper staff, but she often hung out with Lori in the publications office. The office door could be locked, and Amy would sit inside by an open window, holding a cigarette outside and blowing the smoke out. If a teacher came in, she could drop the cigarette to the ground, and there would be hardly any smell of smoke in the room. As Amy, a pushtakit, a mishvot betoch a publications office, a misrad shel aiton, אפשר לנעול את הדלת, אז הם נעולות את הדלת ואם היא יושבת ליד החלון, מעשנת סיגריה, ואם פתאום יגיע איזה מורה, ידפוק בדלת, היא טיקטק זורקת את הסיגריה מהחלון, וכאילו בקושי מרגישים שמישהו ישן שם. אל תלמדו מאימי. That was an awful movie, אימי said. לורי נודד קווייטלי. Are you and David having a fight? her friend asked. Ah, oh, not really. לורי couldn't help smiling slightly. I just wish you could take something besides football seriously. He's, I don't know, he's such a jock sometimes. Jock is like a sport guy, but it's like a guy, it's a half a guy 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 for a sport guy. For teenagers who are just like a drag, just in sport, and not really worried about anything else. But he gets good grades, Amy said. At least he's not a dumb jock like Brian. The two girls giggled for a moment, and then Amy asked, Why does he want to be an engineer? It sounds so boring. He wants to be a computer engineer, Lori said. Did you ever see the one he has at home? He built it from a kit. Somehow I missed it, Amy said facetiously. Behumor. By the way, have you decided what you're doing? <clears throat> By the way, have you decided what you're doing next year? Lori shook her head. Maybe we'll go somewhere together. It depends on where we get accepted. I'm going to go to college. Your parents will be thrilled, Amy said. I don't think they mind that much, Lori said. Why don't you just get married? Amy asked. Lori made a face. Oh, Amy. I mean, I guess I love David, but who wants to get married yet? Amy smiled. Oh, I don't know. If David asked me, I might consider it, she teased. Lori laughed. Would you like me to drop a hint? Come off it, Lori, Amy said. You know how much he likes you. He doesn't even look at other girls. He'd better not. Lori said. She noticed that there was a wishful note to Amy's voice. Ever since Lori had started dating David, Amy had wanted to date a football player too. It sometimes bothered Lori that underlying their friendship was a constant competition for boys, grades, popularity, almost everything one could compete for. Even though they were best friends, that constant competition somehow prevented them from being really close. הם מדברות בחצי צחוק על מה לעשות אחרי התיכון, אין להם צבא מן הסתם, הם הולכים ישר לקולג' ואימי ככה זורקת חצי בצחוק, למה שלא תתחתנו את ודייוויד? ואימי, ו... ולורי אומרת לה, למה פתאום מי מתחתן עכשיו? עזבי אותי. ואימי אומרת לה עוד פעם חצי בצחוק, אני הייתי מתחתנת עם דייוויד עם המציע, זה כאילו חצי בצחוק, אבל לורי מרגישה שיש שם גם טיפה רצינות, כי הם, הם כל הזמן מתחרות ביניהם שתי הילדות האלה, כל דבר שאפשר. ברגע שללורי היה חבר שחקן פוטבול, אז גם אימי הייתה צריכה אחד, אז היא הלכה לבריאן, כן, אבל על הכל, על ציונים, על בנים, על, על פופולריות, תמיד יש מין תחרות כזו מתחת לפני שטח, למרות שהן חברות ממש טובות, ולורי מרגישה שזה תמיד uh, הפריע להם מלהיות באמת 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 קרובות, התחרות הזאת. Suddenly, there was a loud knock on the door, and someone tried the door knob. Both girls jumped. Who is it? לורי asked. Principal Owens, a deep voice replied. Why is this door locked? Amy's eyes went wide with fear. She quickly dropped her cigarette and started digging through her pocketbook for a stick of gum or a mint. Oh, it must have been an accident, Lori replied nervously, going to the door. We'll open it immediately. Amy looked terrified. Lori gave her a helpful look and pulled the door open. Outside in the hall were Carl Block, the grapevine's investigative reporter, and Alex Cooper, the music reviewer. They were both grinning. עבדו עליהם, קיצר, הם אמרו להם, אני המנהל, תפתחו, תפתחו, למה זה נעול? וזה היה שניים, שני חבר'ה מהצוות של העיתון. Oh, you too, Lori said angrily. Behind her, Amy looked as if she was going to faint as the two biggest practical jokers in school stepped into the room. Carl was a tall, thin guy with blonde hair. Alex, who was talky and dark, was wearing earphones connected to a small tape player. Something illegal going on in here? Carl asked slyly. making his eyebrows bounce up and down. You made me waste a perfectly good cigarette, Amy complained. Tisk tisk, Alex said, looking undisapprovingly. So how is the paper coming? Alex asked. 
What do you mean? Lori asked in exasperation. Neither of you has handed in your assignments for this issue. Uh-oh. Alex was suddenly looking at his watch and backing away towards the door. I just remembered I have to catch a plane for Argentina. I'll drive you to the airport, Carl said, following him out the door. Lori looked at Amy and shook her head wearily. Those two, she mumbled, making a fist. סיימנו את הפרק השלישי, אני רק ככה בשתי מילים. פגשנו את שתי דמויות, קארל ואלכס, הם לא סופר חשובים, אבל עוד נפגוש אותם קצת, הם חלק מהצוות של העיתון, הם כאלה ג'וקרס כאלה, הם, הם, הם עושים שטויות ולא ממש רציניים, אבל הם חלק מהעיתון וצריך להכיר אותם. למדנו על החברות של אימי ולורי, למדנו קצת על הבנים, על דיוויד ומה הוא רוצה מהחיים שלו, רוצה להיות מהנדס. על בריאן שהוא סתם לא מי יודע מה, אז גם הציונים שלו לא משהו, עוד קצת על רוברט שהוא לא באמת אידיוט, הוא פשוט ווירד. וזהו, נתראה בפרק הבא, ביי בינתיים.